<laughs> Me and these filters are besties. I wish I could walk around with one of these filters on all day. Hi, everyone. Hi. My hair is getting so thick and full. Everything. Everything. Look how long my hair's gotten. Look at that. Amazing. And I don't take any vitamins or anything. I learned my lesson. Almost died from taking supplements that weren't FDA approved. Thank you. Um, hi, everybody. Happy Friday. I just thought I'd tap in for a second. I've been work, 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 working. Hi, everybody. Hi, Bada, bottom line. Hey. Um, so, yeah, I had a lot going on this week. Busy. Um, it's hot in here. You hear the little one coming? She knows I'm on live. She wants attention. She wants to be a star. Come here. You want Instagram clout? Come on, clout chaser. Come on, little ones. My little wee ones. Come here. Oh, you're so cute. You're so precious. Hey. She says follow her. Her page is at Marge Tiffany, which is really her sister's page. But now they share a page. It's only fair. I don't want her to feel left out. Say hi, Instagram. Hi, Grammy. I love you, baby. Love you, little one. See, as soon as I went on Instagram, she came right in here trying to get some clout. Trying to get her followers up. <sighs> Speaking of which, I don't understand what's going on. Well, I do understand. It's just people need attention. Any man, hi, Mamacita, that wants to deal with me. If you are a clout chaser, Instagram, if you use filters on yourself and you are a male, don't even talk to me again. If you're a man and you use filters, and you are heterosexual and you are trying to date me i repeat don't bother <laughs> come on stop it i'm good i'm good i think it's for girls and kids i'm that's just my opinion you don't have to agree but if i peep that you're using filters and, and doing too many selfies of yourself we're not going to get along because you obviously really um, are doing the most. And you'll probably try to start stealing my foundation and powder so you can, so you can start walking around looking more filterish too in, in real life. You're going to probably ask me to go to the MAC counter with you. Thank you. Um, and, and match your foundation up for you so you can look like that in real life. Like, no. I'm good. Look at this baby bear. She's a cuddle kid. You are so cute. Look at her reaching out for attention. I'm just saying, you know, to each his own, but I don't prefer to date men that do too many selfies and use filters. That's just my personal preference. You don't have to like it. I don't care. There's such a level of freedom in not caring. There really is. There really is. Hi. Oh, she loves massages. Look at this, taking the tension out of your pets. Oh, look at that. They get, pets need massages too. You know that, right? Yes, I agree. Infamous stuts. Oh, look at this. And then on the whole filter topic, I love filters. I have a filter on right now. Because I didn't wear makeup. I have on a little bit of lip gloss and a little bit of high from the, uh, yes, um, and a little bit of mascara. I have a two o'clock uh, call to Paris, Zoom meeting, another nice announcement, another blessing, another collab. Um, but I don't like to announce things prematurely. I learned my lesson doing that with my show when everybody thought it was going to premiere on a certain date and it didn't due to the networks um, messing around with the date, the release date. So it wasn't my fault. So I, I don't like to announce things too prematurely. Yes. Ugh. These Indian guys never cease to amuse me. They're filth. 
We're so easily aroused over nothing, over cleavage. <laughs> no, can we say no life, little dog? Say you have no life. You're on Instagram. See show pops. Thank you. So yeah, so um, I'm finally getting everything together. I'm looking for a showroom so I can start getting merchandise. See, this is a rack. I let my girlfriend come over and shop the other day because she's, you know, she already knew where I live. But I just, I, I can't have people stop through. I don't want a store. Yes, it's on Tubi, Shelly. It's on at Tubi, which is a free app you can download. It's called Finding Chrissy. There's six episodes. We're about to start filming season two. It's gotten tons of acclaim. I haven't had one negative um comment about the show everyone's loving it we had a little bit of issues with the sound in the beginning but a lot of that was fixed oh because we did it independently didn't we we did we don't have the steven spielberg production money but that's okay we still did it anyway didn't we and you're in it you little one god i'm a pet mom god i love my pets look at this how much love is this feel that love to be t-u-b-i mm -hmm. look at this oh my god so let's see, what's, uh, what did I do this week? Business, 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 business. When I say I'm focused, I'm focused. Um, I watch all my motivational videos. I watch at least three or four motivational videos a day, motivational speaking videos on YouTube. Sometimes I'll rewatch them because, you know, sometimes we don't extract every bit of a uh, nugget of, uh, of information and inspiration the first time that we watch a video. So I watched, um, like I was just watching Les, Les Brown. I actually watch a lot of Steve Harvey videos. He's really um, inspiring. Like his stories are like really good. Like, you know, he used to live in his car, um, but he really, thank you juices so bad. I motivate you every day. Thank you. Um, he tells how he got his first gig at the Apollo, how he had no money um to even get there just a lot of really good stories um you know and i also noticed how many people i know in real life and i'm not being negative because a lot of people take a lot of things i say um wrong so i like to clarify and elaborate on some things i see a lot of people constantly posting memes about being on their grind and what they're doing with their money and all that but i'm never seeing any type of growth or change year after year and i'm speaking on people who i know personally um let me turn off the comments for a minute because it, sometimes it distracts me um i don't see i just don't see it i don't see any growth i don't see and you talk to them and it's it's nothing it's not matching up with what they're posting um, and that's okay. And, you know, I try to <clears throat> only deal with people around me that are on the same, uh, the same wavelength, what are they calling it now? On the same frequency, vibe, whatever you want to call it, um, that get it. I believe you either get it or you don't get it. And there's people that are learning to get it. And that's cool. We all are not on the same page and we all have our own timing in life and things. But, you know, we all can't be doing bad. We all can't be um, working on it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if somebody falls off, who's going to be the one in the group to pick them up? And vice versa. Say I fall off, like when I was in the hospital. I was down for a whole month. Thank God I had Dawn, who's on the same frequency, vibe, you know, wavelength, there to pick me up, to, to hold me down, to answer the phone calls. Because, you know, I, I don't have any family, and that's okay. I don't need the pity. It's I've I been on my own since I've been 12. I'm used to it. A lot of people, oh, I'm so sorry, Chrissy. It's, it's okay. These are the cards I was dealt. And I've learned how to play them pretty well. But, you know, that just was proof there and confirmation that I don't need weak people around me. Been there, done that. What are they going to do for me? What have they done for me? But pull me down, 
dead weight, steal, borrow money, never pay it back, beg for money, sob stories, negativity, drama. I don't have one second to waste on it. And like I said, when I was in the hospital, Dawn, who I made my healthcare proxy, my best friend, the lawyer, held me down with no questions asked. She automatically stepped in and knew exactly what to do because I was too weak to speak. I was in a coma. Thank God for her. But see, I already had her in place in my life as a part of my circle. And my circle is very small. Then I had Jatan, who's a very busy celebrity realtor. She has a shoe store. She just um, closed her store in the mall before COVID. Um, very successful woman who took time out to come sit with me in the house. You know what I'm saying? When I was just learning how to get up and walk again, I was extremely weak and frail. I had lost 30 pounds and had like just you know, no muscle tone laying in the bed. So, you know, these are the women that I surround myself with because it is Women's History Month. Um, and I had to really vet my circle and say who is really about it and who's not. Who's not just posting about it? Who's really walking the walk instead of talking the talk? And that's who I can, I can genuinely say I have around me today. And I cut out a lot of people. A lot of these stragglers, opportunists, social climbers, users, and just straight up bums. That ain't about nothing. For instance, the girl that I was, was delegated to take care of me when I came home from the hospital, who also needed a place to stay because she was moving, basically using my whole living room, which is the size of a studio apartment within itself, even bigger, in exchange for helping me. You know, why do I even have to exchange anything? Can't Why can't somebody just want to help you because you've been nothing but good to them, gotten them job opportunities, things like that. I had this girl working with different doctors that I was working with doing their social media just wrecked havoc. And Dawn is a full-time criminal defense attorney who's on trial in court. My friends are out showing houses. You know, they would have been here if they could full-time, but this girl had nothing to do. This girl needed a place to stay. This is a girl who I had, like I said, doing social media. Now it's COVID. She's not working. Okay. Even though Dawn, yes, it was COVID. Um, she still got to do video conferences, court on uh, on Instagram. She still had to get up and put on a, a, a suit and stuff every day and do court virtually. So she did enough when I was in the hospital. So bottom line, this girl, we're not going to say her name because I don't, I don't throw people under the bus, but I'm throwing her under the bus, was committed to Dawn. And Dawn made it very clear. Chrissy has to be watched 24 hours a day. If you have somewhere to go or something to do, let me know. I'll send my housekeeper, Anna, over to sit with Chrissy. Chrissy cannot be left alone. What does this girl do? Leave me alone every chance she gets. Take my car, which I had, I said you can use the car. She had a license. I have full coverage to go to the store, go tanning, go get your nails done, whatever. This girl started lying and abusing the fucking privilege, taking my car getting tickets, running tickets up that I found out after I threw her ass out, not telling me about, scraped the back of the car, and when it got it compounded and, and fixed, ghetto style, because they didn't even buff all the compound. I saw the swirl of the compound when I finally went outside, okay? So I was only going outside to go to doctor's appointments. But she would take the car and go for hours. Now I found out she's going on dates with guys off of Tinder in my car. Then I come home, you know, I'm a Virgo. I notice everything. I notice my squirrel and bird buckets are still full to capacity. Now you guys know I get up every morning. I feed the squirrels, the unsalted peanuts in the shell that I get from Chewy that you guys help with your tip money. When you guys buy the badges that goes towards the squirrel and uh, the bird seed mix. And I also buy 60 pounds of bird seed every eight weeks on auto ship from Chewy to feed those babies out back. The Cardinals, the Blue Jays, we have doves. It's my hobby. All right. 
And I kept asking her when I was in the hospital, are you feeding? I was so weak. I was like, I was all high, drugged up on the pain meds. I said, are you feeding the squirrels and the birds? She's like, yes, of course, of course. Sorry, when I got home, <laughs> the squirrel buckets say elsewise. They were filled. You didn't touch them. You didn't throw any of that shit out there to the birds. I could tell. And then my auto ship order came and I still had bags filled. So you weren't feeding the squirrels and birds. She said, oh, that's stupid anyway. <laughs> that's dumb, Chrissy. <laughs> I don't think it's dumb. I don't think it's stupid. It's obviously something Chrissy likes to do to feed these squirrels with nature and, and these birds and get in tune with nature and help those babies outside, especially when it was cold. And you thought just because I, you know, you don't like it or you think it's dumb, you didn't do it. And you lied and said you were. So that means a whole month went by with those squirrels out there looking for food and those birds looking for food. And you, you were lying to me saying you were feeding them. Mm -mm. So... <clears throat> The end of the saga, which when she had to go was when she told me, she told me, she didn't ask, that she was taking my car. She said, I'm taking your car for the weekend to go upstate with this guy I met. We're going to an Airbnb for the weekend. Oh, you're taking you're taking my car now this is like i'm laying in bed like that movie what was it with kathy bates like the guys laying in the bed weak i said no you're not i said get out get out what was the other uh oh i have a snapshot from progressive they kept sending emails how bad and warning about the the crazy driving running up my insurance too lying about just lie after lie this girl is uh lie 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 one thing i can't stand is a liar a liar a low down dirty liar just you're gonna tell me you're taking my car for the weekend and that let dawn know oh no bitch you gotta go you made a commitment to watch me And you're telling me you're going to take my car. So are you here to watch me or are you here to take advantage of my apartment to use as a free free storage center for your suitcases and bags of shit? Because you're a bum, a vagrant moving from couch to couch, apartment to apartment, right? What are they called? Like a uh, squatter. Then you tell me, you don't even ask me that you're going to take my car now. To go spend time with some guy you met on the internet. You don't even ask me, Chrissy, do you mind? You know, I've been watching you. I need a break. Can I use your car this weekend? Still would have been no. But she really got that comfortable thinking she was going to just start, you know, acting this way. That's when she had to get cut off. So all of this to say, I've cut a lot of people off. Once I see this type of entitlement and of course she's in her 20s she's a millennial and not saying all millennials will feel entitled but a lot of them do but we really had no one else to babysit me but i'd rather be alone and get up and wobble to the kitchen and make myself a cup of noodles or whatever easy than to deal with a bitch in my house disrespecting me period and that's what it started getting to she started feeling entitled um, helping herself, things, you know, it's just a, a matter of respect. I don't care what you ask for, whatever, like I'm always give what I can. And it's not even a matter. I'm not petty at all. And what did she say? Ugh. I said, get out. This ain't working out. Just, just leave. I said, because you're doing the fucking most. She was like, oh, all I've done for you. All you've done for me, that's why you're here. So we're keeping score. I said, honey, me and my friends don't keep score. There's no scorecard here. We don't, we don't compare what you did for me, what I did for you. She's like, fine. I said, I'm going to call you an Uber. Get your stuff together. She's like, make sure it's an XL. <laughs> this bitch. I didn't care. I called the XL.
Girl, get out. XL, out my house. Leave the keys. XL, now. X yourself out in the XL Uber. Get out. So, you know, by this time, I was pretty much okay. It was like maybe I was home like a week. But, you know, it just made me really, really, um, it just, it, it really solidified that I really had to be careful of who I let in my life, who, um, who I lay around me, uh, let around me. I'm precious cargo. I can't just have anybody around me. Yeah, I needed somebody to babysit me, but she was up for the task. She volunteered to Dawn. She she confirmed to Dawn that she would definitely be here for me, and she wasn't. She was only around for what she could get, free use of a car and free storage for her shit before she found another apartment. She wasn't here for me. These people, man, and that's human nature, and I get it. I'm reading The Laws of Human Nature right now by my favorite author, Robert Greene, and that's okay. But don't abuse privileges like using the car and lie and run up $350 worth of tickets. Let's, let's be a little bit more specific on the amount. Don't lie and, and scratch my car and then hide, hide it. You should have said something like somebody scraped the car or you scraped the car. Just, ooh, and I was in a weak position. That's why I hate being weak. You understand? Um, because I don't like depending on anyone. And this was the first time in my life where I was ever forced to depend on someone because of my health. Mentally, I can deal with anything. Death, all kinds of stuff. I've been through some stuff. But physically, when I was incapacitated because of the blood clot in my liver, I had no choice but to, to depend on others. So that made me really, really conscience of who am I depending on when I can walk who's in my life when I'm not incapacitated when I don't need them what are they about because god forbid if something ever happened like that again how are they going to act so now I saw who was really down and who really did things without even thinking about it without expecting anything in return and who was only around at my weakest point of my life just for what they could get out of the situation, which is disgusting. 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 This girl had this, <laughs> the nerve to send me flowers this year. I saw an email from Serving Looks. Congratulations on starting your brand. Those flowers went right in the trash. They meant nothing to me. Congratulations on starting my brand that I said in the hospital I was going to start. But you thought I wasn't going to start it? Of course. We all know I'm going to do whatever I say I'm going to do. But what, you thought I was going to call and thank you for some cheap roses you sent me from 1-800-Flowers? They went right in the trash. That they, they, Those signified absolutely nothing. Those signified what a worm you are and how you see that I'm doing well now when you basically left me for dead and wanted to just come around to take my car to meet guys on Tinder for hookups. And now you see I don't need you and I'm doing good. You thought that was going to be a peace offering? And I'm going to say, oh, thank you for your $24.99 discounted roses. You probably got the free shipping on, girl. Thank you so much for thinking of me and my business. I don't forget anything. Girl, bye. So, you know, I just can't forgive certain things. And I'll be, oh, you should forgive. Don't come at me with this toxic positivity either. That's the, another thing I would really like to discuss. Oh, let it go. Let it go. You're dwelling on things from the past. Stop it. It's negative. Don't tell me how to deal with a situation that you've never probably been in and how I should or shouldn't feel about something, which 95% of the time, time is usually nobody's business. But people always want to put their two cents in. Forgiveness is for you, not for the other poisonous person. It's like drinking the poison, expecting them to die. 
How cliche. We've all heard this, right? And yes, it is true in certain situations. But honestly, I don't care to forgive. This person wasn't adding really much value to my life to begin with. So forgive for what? what what's the end result? To have you come back to straggle around and lie around. Like a liar is a liar. Once I catch you on a lie, I'm always going to label you and, and think of you as a liar. So forgive, forget, who cares? I just keep things moving. I don't even care to forgive, think it through to forget, who cares? So all that um, telling me how I should feel is null and void to me. Because I'm going to feel how I want to feel. If I want to be a bitter bitch about it, I'm going to be a bitter bitch about it. And if that is that if that's how it gets me through it, then that's how it gets me through it. Because yeah, I'm angered that I put someone in my home and entrusted them. My pets were at their godmother's, thank God, because God knows what she would have done to them. They probably wouldn't have gotten fed either. They were with Aunt Claudia, who would have put a little pet park and everything. You couldn't even feed birds. You think I'm gonna leave my dogs here with you? But you got you're in my house. Thank God she didn't steal. Thank God. Maybe she did. Maybe I still haven't noticed. I have so much stuff. <sighs> yeah, it angered me. Because I was counting on someone who let me down. And then you get people, oh, she's young. Just She doesn't know any better. No, oh, she's old enough to know better. Right is right and wrong is wrong. When you make a commitment, stick to it. Whether you feel like it or not. But then I have to realize, you know, not everybody has the same discipline or work ethic, if it's pertaining to work, that I do. Right, little dog? Yeah. You know, my mom even makes me scrub the floor. Oh, stop it. You don't even, you're a princess. You don't scrub anything. Mm. So, all that, um, oh, and then, you know, oh, you know, I look up to you and, I want to be like you and all that. That's scary to me. And they say, oh, imitation is flattery. Uh, no, it's really not. And, and they, they then the people would expect you to be flattered that people are copying you and acting like you and trying to reach out to your contacts like you. And, and it's creepy. But the people want to invalidate your feelings with that too and say, oh, you should be happy they want to copy you. No, I'm not. It's intrusive. It's invasive. Like you want to just steal my whole everything, my whole style, like, and walk around town acting as if you're me, putting yourself in situations like you're me. Honestly, I didn't even do the last pop-up shop that I normally do because someone who acts like they're me was participating. And I didn't want to bump into this person because I at all costs today in my grown life that I've matured, I avoid conflict. So I won't be around a situation where I know I'm going to bump into somebody where I know I feel a certain kind of way and I'm going to read you and we're going to really have a fight. Because I can't just accept it and be the bigger person. I don't want to be the bigger person. No. I hate when people say, I'll just be the bigger person. No, I'm going to be the realer person and tell you about yourself and how fail and effed up you are for doing the shit that you've done, whether you like it or not. Because you're going to come in my face. Oh, Chrissy, I'm so sorry. I miss you, girl. I love you. I'm so sorry for everything I did. I'm so sorry that I stole out your house. I'm so sorry. That I owe you money and I never paid it back. Even when I got money, I didn't think of you. I took off. I didn't even think about taking you out for a cheeseburger, girl. I took my money and went out of town. Didn't even care two seconds to think about taking you anywhere. All you've done for me. I'm sorry that I contacted all your contacts. Every single person I met that I hang out with now, I met through you. And I don't even include you in anything. I'm so sorry that I'm just such a user. And please give me a chance to come back and use you some more, Chrissy. Because I want you to be that bigger person that does that. <laughs> How does that sound? Does that even sound normal to any of you guys? Let me put the comments on. Anybody got anything to say about that? Think about it. Because people are so, I'll be the bigger person. Just ignore it. No. I'm 
about ignoring shit? And honestly, I don't got to sit here and tell people what they did. They know what they did. The hi, Kimberly. They come to you and tell you what they did and, and ask for forgiveness. So my thing is, hi, Monroe Ortiz. I just keep it moving. There's a whole world of people out here, good and bad. When I got rid of some bad ones, God put always, always put some better ones in my life. And I don't need a bunch of people around me for acceptance and approval. Exactly. Like it's so, you're so grown by being the bigger person. Please. Please. So, you know, um, obviously I've gotten through these things. And like I say, you always have to do an inventory of who you have around you. And who is coming around you and wants to be around you and why. But you don't do that. A lot of people don't do that. Oh, you want to be my friend? Let's be friends. And then a month later, oh, girl, she tried to F my husband. Where do you know her from? Oh, I met her at the club. What's her last name? You know, I don't even know her last name. I just know her, her Instagram name. I just, her name's Jennifer. I call her Jen. So you're surprised that you brought Jen from the nightclub home and she tried to F your husband behind your back? That's your fault. Your fault. Because you didn't take the time to get to know her. And you brought her in your home around your man. That's your issues. Not her. She going to be the hoe she is. She a hoe. Jen the hoe. You need attention and you need company that bad. You need companionship that bad. You just bringing anyone around your man, around your house. I see stuff all the time on Instagram. Oh, they not meet my friends. They meet my man until my wedding day. And honey, that don't mean nothing. Because they, they want to be married to a lot of them that are single. They mad that you're getting married. They're mad that you're getting married and they're not. They don't like that. They'll be there clapping. Oh, congratulations, girl. So happy for you. No, they're not. A lot of times they're very envious in their heart because they want a husband too. Instead of really being happy. They're not happy. Or they feel like they're losing you as a friend because you're getting married. But a real friend wouldn't think that. They would genuinely be happy and know that you're not going anywhere. Hello. Acquaintances got those circumstances, not friend privileges, 100,000%. Um, and it is, it, it, if there's a little level of flattery with people wanting to, to do the same things that I do, but don't try to be me. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's weird to me. Um, when they start using the same hand movements and facial expressions and words, that's creepy. It's like that single white female shit, that movie, right? She started cutting her hair and all that and would look, looking like her, she dyed her hair or whatever. I can't. And that's happened to me many times. Is that flattering? Or is it weird? Listen. I sell products. I want you to wear your lip glosses. I mean, the, 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 that you buy from me and, and have beautiful lip colors like I wear. Because I have a lip gloss line. I have over 60 colors. I have clothing. Serving looks clothing line. I want you to look fabulous in your body shape and type. But I have from size 2, from small, to 3X. All right? So you can look good. Put your way in what I wear, okay? I wear one of these outfits. I have it in your size because guess what? You are you got a different body type, body shape, but I'm, I'm there accommodating that so you can look good and put your own spin on it. But I'm supposed to be flattered when somebody 100% comes showing up at my door. 
looking just like me and you're supposed to be my friend. I had a girl who even went to my doctor and got her boobs done by the same doctor that did my boobs because she wanted her boobs to look like my boobs. This girl used to do her hair like mine, cut her hair like that. Um, it got to be weird dressing like me. Like I would wear a fedora with the scarf underneath for a while. I'd start seeing her wearing the fedora with the scarf underneath. Like little Chrissy. It's just weird. Um, but you know, you got to realize some people really don't have their own identity. And a lot of those people are the people that get taken advantage of with scammers and stuff because they're looking for something to belong to or something to believe in. Um, they want to be a part of something. And they get taken advantage of a lot of times. They join these companies just to be part of a group and get left out in the cold when they when they don't sell the products and and um they get the mean girl treatment because they want to be down and there's nothing that there's nothing wrong with wanting to be loved and accepted and part of something and have companionship but please be careful of who you're seeking it from be careful of who you're asking for help when i Came out of the domestic violence. Hi, Kobe. When I came out of the domestic violence situation, I was lost. I have to say that's the tie with the worst time of my life. That's in tie. That's a tie. It's neck, neck and neck with when I was in the hospital for a month. I didn't know who to talk to. I was, I was down and out. I almost lost everything. Okay. I still have permanent hearing damage in my left ear. My left jaw still pops. It's just dislocated still to this day. I had cracked ribs, black eyes. My front tooth was broken. I got veneers. Thank God I have money to get veneers. Thank God. I'm not bragging, but thank God. It's a blessing. Thank you. So I'm going to turn the comments off again because these perverts be messing me up. So... This is another example of who, be careful who you talk to and ask for help. Hmm. When I first came public with the domestic violence and I had the courage to do so, situation, what had happened to me, because God put a calling on my heart to do it. At first I was ashamed, embarrassed, because I got the victim blaming, which I didn't know which was victim blaming at the time. With well, Why would you stay with him? Why didn't you just leave? It's not that easy. If anybody's ever been in a, 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 an abusive relationship or domestic violence, especially if you have kids, it's not easy to just leave. Where are you going? Where are you going with your kids that are in school probably and, and everything, your whole life has been set up and structured? Where are y'all just getting up and going? And especially if you don't have any family like me, where are y'all going? Or you got somebody in your house that's paroled to your house that won't get out and they claim they have nowhere to go and they're threatening to kill you. If you call the police or you call the parole officer or cut your face. So anyway, we're not going to get into all that. That's a whole nother story, which a lot of you have heard in interviews and I talk about. And we'll talk about that on my domestic violence page at Survivor Thrive Global another time. Um, when I got out of that situation and I first went public on Instagram and I posted the photos of my face. People started tagging this woman in Brooklyn. Oh, you need to talk to her. She has a domestic violence organization. Oh, you need to talk to her. I'm not going to say her name because she's such a piece of trash. I don't even want to give her any, any type of clout or any um, acknowledgement. This woman was the devil. Here I am, weak, beaten down mentally more than physically because this man had did a number calling me fat, old, ugly, washed up, you name it. When he was really the one that was washed before he was ever even anything. He was nothing to even wash up. He was never anything in life. So anyway, I started going to counseling and then I came forward. This is before I even started Survive to Thrive Global. I was looking for help from this woman's organization, which isn't even a 501c3. It's based out of Brooklyn. She puts all the donation money I found out later in her pocket. That's one of her sources of income because she's a scammer. And this woman was also abusing me. 
when I'm looking for help, this woman is talking about, girl, your shoes, you need to get some better shoes if you're going to speak in public about domestic violence. Bitch, what? You're talking about my shoes and I almost just got killed? That's, that's what you're talking about, my public, you, you know, your public image, hon. So she kept saying she owned a shelter in Brooklyn. And I kept saying, well, where is this shelter? She would either hang up the phone or act like she didn't hear me. There was no shelter. You're a liar. This woman was a liar. I didn't know all this, though. And I'm vulnerable. And she's acting like she's doing me a favor. But really, she's trying to pimp me out on this DV circuit, which there is a whole circuit for domestic violence where there's clout chasers, too, just like social media. There are people who use being abused as a way to get attention and to abuse other women that have been through it by trying to check them and bark on them. Let me tell you something. If you have been through something as traumatic as domestic violence, the last thing you need is some bitch in a group, group chat, Zoom call, or meeting panel, anything, ever saying anything condescending, questioning you, insulting you, trying to read you about what you've been through. Because you know how much courage it takes to speak up on what you've been through? But there's women out here that do this. And I can name a few that get off on that. They, they want to be the domestic violence expert in the industry. It's an industry for that? For getting beat up? It's an industry? For coming out and speaking your testimony and telling your truth? You're being judged by these other survivors and victims. They're trash too. So this woman is the queen of the trash survivor victims. Because not only is she taking donation money and pocketing mo that money that's meant for women that need help. She's also exploiting them. She tried to exploit me and have me do public speaking because I was on Love and Hip Hop. And she's like, oh, throwing her name on things. Oh, I just I have a booking. There's a um, there's a panel that you need to speak on. I said, well, I'm not really ready to sit in front of a group of people yet. Like I'm just easing my way into coming public with this, and and on my time. No, I think it'll be therapeutic for you. And finding out she's getting donations for me being there, not even telling me this dirty bitch, and putting it in her pocket, and then asking me to promote her organization and her Instagram page on social media and I didn't know any better I'm thinking I'm trying to help other women not to be abused and go through what I went through and I really didn't know anything about all this PTSD and all that that I now have been diagnosed with this woman is straight trying to exploit my platform and my large following to 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 up her 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 social media game and get more followers to beg them for donations to put in her pocket was pimp put it in my pocket yeah, this is her in Brooklyn. So all of this going back to the initial topic of what I'm talking about is be careful who you ask for help and who you trust. Because I really didn't know this woman was the devil the whole time. Then I started hearing things about her that, oh, yeah, girl, she's a scammer. She's a con artist. There ain't no shelter. This woman lives off of scamming people. And I'm like, wow, was she even really abused? She's telling me some story from like 1985. And I'm not ever going to discredit anyone's story or 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 um, facts. Because I'd be just as bad as these women in these groups that are trying to read other women and all that. Like their story is worse than the other one. You know, it's, it's the battle of the war stories. It's disgusting. That's not That's not what getting help is about. It's about, you know, we each have our own uh, different experience. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's supposed to be a place of trust and, and a judgment-free zone. But unfortunately, a lot of these people don't get that. So I'm starting to question, damn, did this woman even really ever go through it? Because she don't really talk about her experience too much. It's more like, I have a shelter. I help women. I was abused. It's like this whole broken record. Because when you ask about her story, it's just like, oh yeah, it was like in 1985 and this man used to stalk me 
and this and that. Okay, that's fine. It doesn't matter how small or big it is. It's still abuse and you're still welcome to talk about it. But once I saw like some inconsistencies with a lot of things, it just didn't match up. Um, and then she was just always talking about getting grants and all this stuff and how her bank accounts were frozen. It just, it really hit home that this woman is a scammer. And she's trying to use me and my horrible near-death experience of almost getting beaten to death to take advantage of me and my platform to scam money out of people. Because the more followers she's got, the more opportunity she has to get money from these people that believe her bullshit. How did this end? I linked her up with someone because she claims she does PR and all this stuff. I linked her up with a friend of mine that gave her a decent amount of cash. Once he gave her that cash to help him with his uh, his work that he did, I called her because I was going through something. I said, I'm really having a bad day right now. She said, listen, hon, you can only call me. I'm only available Monday through Wednesday from now on. Don't bother me on the weekends. I'm with my grandchildren. That's what she told me. After she got my friends for some money and, and ganked them for some money, scumbag bitch, and did absolutely nothing for them, which I really didn't know she was. I really thought she could do some things because she did do some things in the industry years prior that were legitimate. I can say that. But that was a long time ago. But she's acting like she still has these contacts. We went out in public a few times. Everyone knew who she was. Everyone knew her. But I had to realize this is the person that they knew 20 years ago. This is now not the washed up con artist. So she literally told me, don't bother her, Miss Domestic Violence Advocate. She straight up said, don't bother me. You piece of shit. So fast forward, I blocked her. Never spoke to her again. Disgusted. Blocked her. Um, anyone that even mentioned her, I said I have no affiliation with that woman or her bo bogus fake organization. But, you know, I don't like to put people in the middle of the drama because then I look like I'm the drama, right? If I start telling the story, it's, girl, you're full of drama, Chrissy. No. So I just leave it alone. I don't deal with her. I have no affiliation. What happened? A whole bunch of stuff, girl. I don't feel like getting into all that right now. I'm getting into it with you guys right now because it's just vague and it was a long time ago. This is over five years ago when I first was coming out of the situation. <sighs> Fast forward. I go to my friend's party in Brooklyn. A doctor. One of my best friends. She's fabulous. One of my circle who I can count on. A real woman of integrity who really walks the walk business owner, entrepreneur. She told me they're filming a reality show at her birthday party for her story because this woman is accomplished. She's great. I love this woman. Anyway. Well, I don't know. Miss Fat Ass, fake DV organization was going to be there. No idea. Because she's, you know, she had to tell me, you know, when you come in, they're going to have camera crews, produ producers, they're going to be filming. I just want you to know you're going to be on camera. I said, that's fine, girl. Please. I was already on Love and Hip Hop. I care about being on camera. It's anything to support her. This girl is the shit. I walk in. There's a bishop from the church that I know standing there. Arguing with Miss DV. Miss Fake DV organization. They're arguing. Because he don't like her. He's from Brooklyn too. And he knows all about her. And her, her jaded past of scamming and scandal. They're arguing. So I walk in. Hey, happy birthday. You know. I didn't know I'm walking into a scene. That they're in the middle of this argument. And there's microphones everywhere. So I... I don't know that I'm actually being recorded. Like, I'm not mic'd up. Normally, they put a mic on you. You know what I'm saying? To be in the scene. So she walks in. She's like, Chrissy, hey, can you tell him how I how much I helped you and what I did for you? Because he's saying I'm a scammer. I said, you are, and you are. And you are. 
She looked. She said, but can't you tell him everything I did for you? I said, what did you do for me? Oh, this was my moment, honey. This was my moment. I said, what did you do for me? Oh, and it's on. It's being filmed too, honey, and recorded. I said, what exactly did you do for me? She said, uh, uh, she started stuttering because she couldn't think of one little thing. I helped you. I said, help me how? I said, help me how? I said, all you did was exploit me and my platform. I said, you're sick. I said, and I looked at him. I said, she ain't helped me with nothing. She's a user and a scammer. She's like, what? How you going to say that about me? Because she want to be Miss 300 pound tough Brooklyn chick. All masculine. I said, exa I said exactly what I said. You ain't do shit for me. But try to exploit my platform and use me. You want me to say it louder? I said, actually, you want to go outside? I'm from Baltimore. You know, I don't play that shit. I'll fight anybody. And I'm not being ghetto and I'm not being ratchet. But she wanted to try to get loud and ah, 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 and ah, ah, ah. And the stance changed. You know what I'm saying? I said, I'm not going to stand here in my friend's birthday party and disrespect her in her house. I said, because we can go outside and take this outside because I've been been waiting to see your ass. She's like, ah, Miss Tuffy, you ain't so tough now, right? She didn't do nothing. She backed down. Miss Tough, Miss Gangster Bitch from the 80s. Legendary, right? You're so gangster. When I said, let's go outside, because I'm not about to stand in my friend's living room and do all this. She went and sat her fat ass right back down on the fucking sofa in the corner like this. Girl, bye. Fraud. I called her out, out. And I was relieved. I felt good because now I'm not the weak, beaten down Chrissy that you met that was reaching out to you for help that everybody was tagging on Instagram that were fooled by your wicked ways either woman. Now I'm I'm back. I'm the strong, re Chrissy rebooted. Was it 2.0 or whatever? Chrissy, whatever, 10.0. I'm not the little frail. I need help and I don't know what I want to do. And I'm about to lose everything. Oh my God. I can't believe this happened and got this far. No, what, bitch? You want to go outside? That's who, who you talking to now, user. Miss, don't call me. Don't bother me except Monday through Wednesday. Really, bitch? Why don't you tell the bishop about that, that you standing here trying to act like you you not a con artist too? Because that's what you was doing when I walked in. You weren't planning on me walking in, hun. So, all this to say, be careful of who you ask for help. And be careful who you let in your circle. And what was my third thing? What was my third thing? I forgot. But be careful who you ask for help. <laughs> I'd be going on for my little tangents. But um, I could have put this woman on blast, and I still could. But then again, like I said, I'm going to look like the drama. I'm going to look like I'm a hater. When I could be using that energy, instead of throwing her under the bus, I put that energy into building up my organization and helping people. Because she's still going to find ways to scam, whether I air her out or not. Look at this Tinder, Tinder swindler. He's still out scamming and came up off of that, from that uh, acknowledgement. If Netflix didn't do that story on him, none of us would know who he is, right? 99% of us wouldn't. When you acknowledge these people and you, you bring attention to them, people are going to go see who they are. They're going to check them out. So me saying her name or acknowledging her or telling you who she is, it's only going to make y'all curious to go see who she is. You're going to go request her on her page and probably follow her. And a lot of y'all might fall for her bullshit too and even send her some cash. So me blowing her up and exposing her and all that shit is only doing her a favor by bringing attention to her, which she does not deserve. Because she's still going to find a way to scam. Me putting her on blast is not going to shut down her whole operation. I'm sorry, it's just not. And people are like, well, you could be saving people from getting scammed. No, 
Unfortunately, most people who get scammed get scammed because they're vulnerable and they believe any bullshit. This woman is a good bullshitter. Trust me. So me telling you, nine times out of ten, you're going to listen to it, but you're not going you're going to hear it, but you're not going to listen to it. You're going to hear it, but you're not going to listen and take heed. And she may say, oh, she's just a hater. I did so much for her. Just lie and lie. And you may fall for it and say, damn. You know, there's two sides to every story. Well, three sides, your side, her side, and the truth. So you're all mixed up in this drama, which you ain't really got a damn thing to do with, right? All because I mentioned her name. Now you went into her little domain and she got a chance to talk shit to you and probably talk you out of everything I just said and possibly send her some cash. We're not doing that. That's why I don't send light shed light on these people and put them on blast and all that no for what there's a billion more like her in different every arena and every area and anything you could think of doing the same type of scamming and all that they're always going to find a way to do it stopping them from one way isn't going to stop them from the next way they're going to figure out to do it it's just human nature look i'm reading this laws of human nature I, that's i haven't even read that in the book oh, let me go back on the comments can you imagine them changing your name as the same as yours? Um, yeah, I have. They have. A lot of them make fake the fake pages or and that's cute. Like if you're a kid or a teenager and you, you know, I used to want to dress like Madonna and you know, I used to dress like Madonna. Like, you know, but I was a teenager. It's part of forming your identity. Right? Part of, of growing and, and seeing, okay, I like this look. You know, one week I'm goth, one one week. Um, um, uh, a metalhead. The next minute, I'm wearing fucking Adidas and Run DMC. Fucking, I had the leather uh, sweatshirt. Ugh, I wish I still had that. You know how much money that's worth now? That Run DMC Adidas shit from back then. Iconic, like museum quality shit. So that's cute if you're a teenager and you're trying to establish your identity in this world and and you know be be part of something bigger when you're 16. Not as a 50 year old woman. You should already kind of know who you are by now, right? Even though I'm always evolving, I'm always changing, but my core values and beliefs are, are not gonna change. Hi, Casey Smith, my girlfriend from Baltimore who I grew up with, yes. Um, You know, so. It's been Women's History Month. Um, which is great. But I just want everyone to really realize um, if you claim that you are so into this women's empowerment, and I can't stand that word. It's so overused, empowerment, empowerment. Are you really walking the walk instead of talking the talk? Are you really helping the next woman out? Are you really um, living the life that you post and portray on social media? Are you really? Because you can't be doing that if you're hating on the next woman or you're condemning the next woman <clears throat> or, you know, <sighs> judging I love it when somebody judges me. Like I have an OF, which I can't even say because they don't want that on, on um, Instagram. The link is in my bio because you get judged for that. I am a very uh, sexually open woman who's comfortable in my own skin. I'm very proud of my body. Um, always have been, but I've been judged for that my whole life. So, you know, there's a lot of situations and panels and award ceremonies and such that I'm not included in because of my beliefs in uh, being so open sexually, verbally. I get judged by these women's empowerment groups 
Like I can't be active politically in my community. Like I can't have the 501c3 nonprofit for domestic violence that I've proudly had for the last five years. Like I can't have a successful clothing store. Like I didn't have an office on Madison Avenue and was New York City's top closer in the plastic surgery industry. Why? Because I like to show my tits. That every, all those other things are null and void because I'm proud of my body. That makes me less than to these women empowerment bitches. I'm a slut. She's a ho, oh, oh. She's low class because she likes to show her body. God forbid, we don't want her at our event. She can't be honored. Look at what she does. She wears a thong. Look at her. She's not good enough to be here. Even though she's a hundred times smarter and accomplished than us, than we'll ever be in life. She can't come to our event because she shows too much skin on Instagram. It's not acceptable to our group of mean girl women empowerment bitches that we are. Shame on Chrissy. Girl, bye. <laughs> but isn't that the real empowerment? I hate that word. But isn't that the real empowerment of knowing yourself, being comfortable in your own skin as a woman, not being ashamed? I don't turn the lights off during sex. I want them on, baby. You can see all the cellulite jiggling. How about that? And guess what? I could still go in front of the city council and do a whole speech about domestic violence and help change some laws too when I'm done. How about that? But in their closed minds, it's disgraceful. Ah, she's not a good example of women's empowerment. Like, who are you? You're the women's empowerment uh, manual, bitches. You wrote the women's empowerment guide. Shut up. That's why you don't see me at a lot of these events. Because it's the Mean Girls Club all over again. It's the Mean Girls. You buy your overpriced ticket. They hear them talk about a bunch of bullshit. Not all, but a lot. Then they want to sell you their books and their programs and all this other shit. That ain't doing a goddamn thing for you. And then when you don't want to buy it, they don't have time for you, girl, because they're about their coin and they're about their business. And unless it's about business, then they don't have nothing to talk about because they're on their grind and you should get on your grind like them. And if you don't choose to be on your grind the way that they're on your their grind, then sorry, we can't talk to you. Mean girls, girl, bye. That's exactly how it is. So you don't see me a lot of these events and they don't like me at a lot of these events because they know, I know they out here scamming and hustling. It's a whole nother hustle too. You are capitalizing off of these women's desire to learn more, to become better, to grow. But if they don't do it the way you want to do it and buy your bullshit and your merchandise, then they're not allowed to learn and grow with you because you're full of shit. That's why. And I'm the bad guy. I'm a troublemaker. I'm drama. I'm aggressive. I'm outspoken. I'll be that. I'll be that. They don't want to come and rock their little fake Fisher Price plastic boat event. Girl, your ship is sinking. Because now everybody on Instagram doing it and people are getting hip to it. But I'm the bad guy. I'm the bad girl. So I just can't sit at one of these events and be phony. I'll sit there like this. Oh, God. 
Is it over yet? Because I'm, I'm good. But there's some, a lot of great events too. There's some good things that I've gotten a lot of good stuff out of. I'm talking, I'm not going to sit here and negate the fact that there are some wonderful speakers. I watch a lot of them on, on YouTube. They have a lot to say and I've learned a lot. But YouTube is free. FYI. I don't need to pay $500 to come to your event. To sit here and say, here you say the same shit you're saying on YouTube. Hello. Uh -huh. So yeah, ma'am. You know. Be careful of these predatory women's empowerment groups, organizations. Because a lot of them can do you more harm than good. Because they're fake. They're not empowering they're not empowering anything or anyone but their own bank accounts and pockets. And if you don't go along with their program, they will abuse you mentally and verbally and say, you're not hustling hard enough. It's not their fault that you paid them money and you're not doing what you're supposed to do. And they're, you know, they're not, they're not uh, available that week in their schedule that you paid to be on to talk to you because they're booked and busy and you should get booked and busy too. That's abusive. It's condescending. And it's wrong. You're going to look for people for help, just like I did with that lady at the lowest point in my life. The only difference is I didn't give her any money. Trust me, she would have tried if there was money to give at the time. I was at my lowest point. She would have tried to take that too. Because she was a, a predator. There's so many people with this predatory behavior that are preying on people that are going through things financially, emotionally, spiritually, physically. They're selling you all kind of products that they damn well know do not work. That's predatory. But they're pro playing on your need to believe that it works. And they're cashing out. And they don't care. They don't care. And that's okay. It's a hard, cold world out here. Accept it. But that's all the more reason you need to protect yourself, guard your heart, and be cautious and leery of anyone that comes around, especially if they seem so great and too good to be true. A lot of them are wolves in sheep's clothing. They are sociopaths. Some of them are psychopaths. You know I've had a stalker or two or three or four. Exactly. You said terrible. I've been through it. They use our pain for gain. Exactly, Miss Redbone. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And these predators now are all over social media preying on, oh, and they're all, they're all self-proclaimed experts, gurus, life coaches. What's, you went to YouTube University? Where did you get this degree? I'm just saying. I can talk about a lot of things because I have life experience and a lot of them do. But the difference is I'm not trying to prey on y'all and sell y'all a bunch of shit that I know is only going to make you worse than you were before you sent me the money to try to uh, help you. I do plan on doing some coaching and some I don't even like using that word. What, what else words are there? What other words are there? Um, and, and some some events. Um, but none of my stuff will be structured in that type of way where uh, it feels clickish and, you know, I feel like I'm just taking your money. What is that one girl there? They're suing her for all that stuff. It's just people are just out here doing the most. And then they're bragging and showing off all the shit they're buying with the people that they steal their money from. Um, the one girl and her husband, they, they were suing for doing something like that. Listen, 
I ain't not getting nobody's hustle. I don't even care. To each his own. But when you start deliberately hurting people that are seeking help, that's not cool. For a profit. That's not cool. And yeah, I agree. It's up to you as a person of what you do with that information or what you pay for. Um, it's up to you how far you take it. And I agree with that. And not everybody can be with you every second to guide you through the process. Like for me, all I can do is give information. You can take it how you want it and do with it as you will. When I watch videos on YouTube, what do I do? I, I extract what I can from it. Oh, I got a call to Paris in an hour. Um, you know, that's it. Ain't no hustler hustling me <laughs> for name, right? Oh, and then just one more thing. I had a, a little back and forth last night with a guy I know in real life. He's young. He's in his 20s. Is he still in his 20s? I'm sort of Murph's friends. Anyway, he posted. And I saw in his story, and it made my stomach turn. It said, ask yo bitch for $1,000 and see what she do. L-M-F-A-O. Ew. 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 I saw that post. I had to DM him. I said, ew. Ew. Like, who raised you? I said, why would you ask? Why would a grown ass man be asking a woman for a thousand dollars? Though the same way women ask men for money. This was the most bitch tendency conversation. I said, ew. I said, you mean a woman asking a man who's supposed to be a protector and a provider? That's a whole nother hour long conversation if we wanted to take it there. And it pretty much ended with me saying, I don't know why this has been a constant topic of conversation with, hi, Angelina, with men and women now of who's supposed to pay. I said, and who's supposed to do this and who's supposed to do that. I said, because I'm almost 50. I'll be 50 in September. And the way I've grown up, it's never even been a question of who's supposed to pay. Duh, the man is. I said, but now everybody want to make this a topic of 50-50 and the woman this and that. I can't. Angelina, you missed the whole, I had the whole domestic violence uh, community topic going. And what happened to me when I looked for help, when I got out of my, in, uh, situation and how I was scammed by that woman in Brooklyn and how Angelina has a, dom a legitimate domestic violence organization called Finding Hope and she goes hard. She goes harder than me. She's also aware of there's a lot of fakers and, and frauds in the high ice um, domestic violence community. And I use that word loosely community because you're supposed to be communal and together but there's a lot of uh clout chasers and and judgy abusive women that yes at returning hope that are also in this community that aren't really there to help they're there to judge and uh downplay another woman's experience or story. Uh, it, it's sick and sad. Like I've been in, in groups where, you know, they're trying to one up how more they were abused more than the other woman. Like, ew, that's not what these, these, these meetings are for in these panels and discussions. You know, it doesn't matter if, if, if you never even a man put his hand on you. If you were abused in any kind of way, your story and your experience and your, your, your trauma is still valid. 
but you get, you said you got one at work. But there's, that's the nature of, of a lot of these groups and organizations is they just want to come and I'm the queen bee of the domestic violence world. It's not supposed to be a queen bee. Nobody's better and above anybody. We're supposed to be a sisterhood. Angelina started the Sisters in Purple, which I'm part of. Awesome. But it's nobody's better than anybody. But a lot of these people, you see that shit all the time. It's ridiculous. And it, don't just, it happens in the breast cancer organizations. It happens in the cerebral palsy. Every single, the pet, the pet community, they got beef with other organizations because they trying to get their donations and do that. I could go on and on. But Angelina knows these things go on too. Um, but I was telling my story of how I looked for help when I got out of my organ, my ordeal and people were tagging that woman in Brooklyn and now she basically um, was trying to use me and my platform to blow her her page up to get more donations, which she was putting in her own pocket. And she wasn't a 501c3. Her bank accounts were frozen by the IRS for scamming and criminal activity. So my thing was, uh, be careful who you ask for help. But I didn't know back then. I didn't know who to turn to for help. I called the domestic violence hotline. You know what I'm saying? They were trying to tell me to go to a shelter. I didn't need to go to shelter. I had a house. I just got him out. But I still needed to start my life over. Everything was in shambles. Mentally, financially, physically, I looked sick. I wasn't eating. I was tore up. So this person that I asked for help did more harm than good. Because she was one of those clout chasers. And she was using tra people's trauma to not only profit financially, but to gain attention for herself as a self-proclaimed expert. Who said she owned a shelter. And every time I asked, where is this shelter? Oh, it's deep in Brooklyn, girl. We'll go another time. I found out there never was a shelter. Ever. She didn't own a shelter. It was all a, a scam. So, you know, um, that's why, I, you know, the, top, the topic of today is be careful who you ask for help. Evaluate your circle. And always question people's intentions. Thank you, Marley. It's a filter. My tan is beautiful. It's a filter. Many fil survivors don't know, and it's unfortunate that people prey on victims. Angelina knows. There are people that see you at your weakest and they want to take advantage of that one way or the other. And I've heard some really bad stories about men that pose as helpers or therapists that lure women in only to abuse them. So be very careful. And I'm not saying all, all people are like that. There's more good than bad. But beware of these wolves and sheep's clothing. And that's in anything. I'm not just talking about domestic violence. Be careful what you sign up for with these online groups and courses. Um, ask to speak to other people that have dealt with these people. If they say they've helped all these people make money and all this success, you want to hear from the people that they claim they helped. Where are they at? You know what I'm saying? It's just getting real nasty out here in this world. You got to, like I said, protect yourself, protect your heart. And I'm not saying be cold and, and stonewall everyone and all that. No, we all need to grow and learn and help. Exactly. Angelina said, Christy and I had the experience together, people trying to use us. Yes. And there's many more and there'll be more to come. But that's why you got to keep your eyes open. Watch what people say, watch how they move, watch how they act and see what their intentions are and ask people, what are your intentions with me? What, what, what are you hoping to get out of being friends with me? Like, what are your intentions? Oh girl, nothing. I just think you're wonderful. Watch that too. When they sit and praise you. Oh, I just admire you. I look up to you. Normally that's the setup for some other shit they got planned to get you guard down. So they can get close to you, then just stick the knife in and twist it. Gotta watch them. Don't you trust me? 
I hate when people say, don't you trust me? Nope. I don't know you. I don't even know your government name. When's your birthday? I don't know you. Trust you. That's the last thing I'm going to do. Hi, Success Clothing. My people's in the Bronx. Ow. Um, trust you. That's the dumbest question I ever, ever, uh, heard in my life. You don't trust me? I knew you two weeks. Who are you? What's your last name? What's that big pun? Why well, know you from where? <laughs> and listen, any of us are susceptible to being taken advantage of. In, in many ways, professionally, personally, with love. And how do you think I got in a, in a domestic violence relationship? This guy was a wolf in sheep's clothing. Handsome, charming, nice, funny. He wasn't just, hey, I'm a woman beater. Nice to meet you. No, it was a gradual progression. Digression, I should say. Yes, I will block fast. Hold on, let me get a, a water. Look, this is some serving looks items that I'm putting out. They're on the website. Some of them. Oh. We're getting the website ready for the relaunch on April 1st. Yes. I'm going to tell y'all one of my weight loss secrets here. This is free information. This is watermelon juice. Google watermelon juice. Watermelon juice has a lot of fiber, caffeine, more than coffee, and it's a natural diuretic. It will make you pee a lot. A lot of people don't really be looking into watermelon juice. Watermelon juice is everything, and it's good. And you got to stay hydrated. Got to stay hydrated. Mm. Yeah, man. So, yeah, I got this at ShopRite. Everybody thinks they got to go to Whole Foods. This was a shop right. Hi, it's Biscuit. Ow. Hold on. Let's see if this Biscuit's go, uh, let's go live. So we can get... Oh, you know what? I'm sitting here hitting the mouse on my computer. Hold on. Because he got a lot of fun. To get new followers, go live with someone that has... Well, they don't even have to have a lot of followers. Yo. Yes. You're back. I'm back and better. Thank God. How long were you on Instagram jail for? Oh, man, they took my page for like a month. A month. Yeah, it's like, yeah, like a month. Um, yeah, I don't even want to talk about it. It was, it was bad times, bad times. But do you know specifically what did it? Was there a certain, uh, I know you don't want to talk about it. I'm sorry, but. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's all, it's, it's so all good. We can warn people. It's, it's all good. The thing is, it's like, you know, I've been here before. You know, I, I try to like. You know, only post and promote, you know, things that are, you know, funny. You know, I don't try to, like, get on here and, and post all the crazy stuff. But, you know, I get so much traffic that it could be, like, a handful of people reporting it at the same time. And, I, I you know, again, I don't, I don't work for Facebook, Instagram. I don't know what goes on. I just be working and doing my thing. So it's like, I don't, you feel me? I can't even... Certain videos that I don't think would get flagged get flagged, and certain things that I think would don't. Isn't it weird? Yeah, that's why. Like, I, to this day, it's like I want to really like go up to Facebook, and I need to like sit down with them over there and just let them know really like who I am and what I do. And you know, I want to follow the guidelines. I don't want to. You feel me? Exactly. Like, You're the world's biggest blogger. Hello. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to like I, I love the platform. I, yes. you know, I love what I do. I love everybody. Everything is love. It's love and it's peace. It's a it's a safe place. You know, that's it. Yeah. Like, I, I got kids. Like, come on. I'm not out here like trying exactly. to like post people getting beat up and like, nah, it's all funny. It's all viral. It's all New York. It is what it is, you know? And they you know, certain things you can't say, you can't, it's too much. You know what I mean? That's why I just, you know, do my best and um try to stay out the way, man. It's gotten really strict. And I think a lot of them are bots, to be honest, because some of it just yeah. doesn't make sense. Yeah, people, uh, my, my page got attacked. You know, I had um, a bunch of comments and, you know, that's why, like, right now my page, 
I don't want to have it how it is, but like only people that follow me and I think, yeah, only people that follow me could comment or something like that, you know, because it's just, it's crazy. You know what I mean? And again, like people like us, people that, you know, out here doing the right thing, we should be protected. That's the, that's, that's my thing. It's like, yo, you know, don't take my page away. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, I'm, I'm trying to follow the God. I'm trying to promote to other people to follow the guidelines. You feel me? Exactly. And I've never seen nothing wrong on your page. That's yeah, and that's why everybody, everybody that was hitting me, they're like, what happened? What did you, like, you don't post nothing crazy. And again, there's a lot of people that they want to pay me to promote certain things. And I, you know, a lot of videos got too much twerking or guns and yeah. stuff like that. And I tell people like, yo, I, 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 w I would love to, but I can't post it on my page. You know what I'm saying? Because of the content, you know? Exactly. So I, no, so I get it. No. I be, I be on my P's and Q's and this shit still happens. So, like, you feel me? I'm staying away. I don't even post as much because I'm like, man, like, what, what's up with the algorithm? or my, I'm afraid to mess up now. It's, it's sad because are we supposed to have freedom of speech? It's mad anxiety. You can't have an opinion on something. You can't say something if it ain't a proven fact like bro i i don't got no time for that i'm too busy to understand all of those type of things you know and we both make money from this platform so it's more serious because we monetize it so we really don't want to mess up because it's a source of income so if you get that meeting at facebook please let me tag along because but i it, have a lot see, to that's, say as well. see that's that, that's my thing like if they if the more information i know the more information i'm gonna share so it's like you know, if, if, if I go over to Facebook and they tell me, okay, you could do this, you can't do that, or this or that, I'm going to let everybody know. Like, all right, yo, this is what you got to be careful. You feel me? Like, I'm that guy. You know, I'm trying to share the wealth. I'm not, you know, I people hit me up every day. Yo, Biz, I lost my page. I'll be feeling bad because, you know, this is a way that damn near everybody eats, you know? So it's, and I lost my page before this page, and I never got that one back. And that was, again, I went through it. That was like four wow, years. Wow. That was like, that was yeah, that's sick. why. That's why the page that I'm on got two T's because my other one that had one T, it got and and when when I lost that page, Chrissy, when I lost that page, I just had my daughter. My daughter's four years old. I just my daughter was just born. I just moved into my house and boom, I had to start all over again. Wow. You feel me? Wow. But you know, you yeah. support you support me. You know what I mean? You know, I love you. You're a great father. You're a great just all around. Yo, everybody that's you. following me, follow him. He is such a good guy. His I post is that. great. He's always covering a lot of major events that a lot of us wish we could be at. Uh, um, yes, lit. But yeah, no, no, definitely. Uh, I think I think Facebook and Instagram too should be giving out more information too in different ways and letting us know what's what's changed and what's inappropriate. Like I don't want to read through. 80 paragraphs and look for maybe one or two things that I need to know. They just right. need to make it clear and concise, put out some videos like, hey guys, I'm not sure if you're updated with our new policies, but you can do this, 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 and you can't do that, that, that. Just like they make those little videos like pointing at the stuff, don't do this, this, and, make and, it and, and even And even this is what I'm saying, like I would love to have a conversation with somebody that's really somebody over there because they should make it to where even if you're getting ready to upload something that it might be sensitive. It should be some type, just like when you type in the word COVID or certain things you type or certain things you say, it kind of like they have a filter for that. You know what I mean? So they should, yeah. just filter, they should just like bulletproof or filter everything. So then it's just nothing, nobody, this wouldn't happen. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. you know, and again, it, you know, it is what it is, man. You know? Yeah. They, they demonetized my, um, uh lives for a month because I used one word on my friend's page. I didn't know. And it wasn't even really that bad. <laughs> Yo, that's, Who I, I, I just, it's a guessing game. So it's just, I play it safe and don't say anything. Like, I know. Yo, I get, I be having anxiety. Every time somebody hit me up like, Yo, Biz, I need you to post this. I literally sit and watch the content like three times to make sure like it ain't nothing crazy. It's not, you know. Yeah. And again, and again, certain things I see and I look at, I'm like, okay, this is no, you know, this is nobody's getting hurt, nobody's using profanity, nobody's nude. You know what I mean? Like some women, some women are thick. What you know? They, but they're not nude. It's not. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's just even with me, I've always been voluptuous, and in my life, I've gotten comments 
like at certain functions, like, oh, what you're wearing is not appropriate, but it'll be similar to somebody that's 100 pounds. It's the same exact kind of outfit or dress. Yeah. It just looks different on me than it does on them, but I'm being shamed for wearing it because I'm yeah. shamed. You're always, you're always, always you're always classy. That's your, you're classy as fuck. You know, like, Thank what are you going to do Thank about you. it? <laughs> You know what I mean? But people look at you differently because of the way you're shaped. It just comes off different, and then they think it's inappropriate when you're really doing nothing wrong. They, which want, is you, the same they, here. they want you in a hoodie. They don't want you in a sundress. <laughs> exactly. But you put somebody else with a different shape in that sundress, and they're, oh, you look great, girl. You look Vogue, Vogue yeah. model. Listen, you know, I want to. I want to. I want to see you. I want to. <laughs> we want. We want to see you in a sundress. We want to see you on a red carpet. So. You know what I mean? Yes, thank you. Keep, but yes. Keep being fabulous. Thank you. Yes. All right. We'll definitely catch up soon. Thank you for joining in. I'm about to oh. get off because my battery is low. But thank you for the information. All right, Chris. We definitely keep have to talk to you. So I'll talk soon. Bye. Right, have a good thank day. You. Have a good weekend. All right. All right. Bye. All right, guys. So that's my friend. He's great. Wonderful person. Yeah. So a lot of it's just hate. People hating and reporting, like, and you got to think about it too, guys. If people are snitching on you on Instagram, what do you think they'll do to you in real life? Another, go back to watch the company you keep. Watch the people around you. If they're reporting and bragging about reporting people all the time on Instagram and telling on people, uh, I don't think I want to hang out with you in real life because you're going to tell on me and report me in real life if something ever got weird, if we were out and put in a situation. Right? That's their character. Just comes out in different ways. You gotta watch it. So thank you, honey baby thirty nine eighty eight. So yes. Watch people. If they're gonna tell on you on in on Instagram, they're gonna tell on you in real life, honey. All right, my battery's low. I love you guys. I'm gonna keep this and download it. But then he just made some points about the cursing. I cursed a couple times, but I don't think I don't know. I'm not trying to get kicks off of Instagram because I love you guys and you guys love me. Love you guys. But yeah, no, that's crazy. But no, it's been a, a great uh, live today. I try to come on as much as I can, but let me get back to work. I have the two o'clock call, Zoom call to Paris. I'm actually going to put the translator app on my phone because this is my friend. Her English is great, but sometimes there's certain things. I'm going to just be like, what? Say that again. I'm going to have them translated like they do on 90 Day Fiance when he talks into the phone and then it comes out in each other's language. I'm going to have that ready for my two o'clock Zoom call. This is a great, great uh, opportunity. And let me tell you, this is a real friend. This is a girl I know that lives in Paris. She's way younger than me. She's a class act. She's always thinking of me for opportunities. And she's like A-list. She's a writer for a big magazine over there. She's accomplished. And she thinks of me and she doesn't judge me for these opportunities with these brands. That's a real B-I-T-C-H. It's a real one. She's a real one. I love her. That's what real women's, I hate the word empowerment. That's what real women's empowerment is. When somebody has an opportunity that may not be suitable for them and they think of you, say, you know what? I'm not right for this opportunity, but Chrissy is. Let me put Chrissy on. That's a real, that's a real friend. That's a real person. Because they're not, they're not selfish. They realize there's a whole world out here of opportunities. And I'm not going to lose nothing by putting them onto something. Because one day they may think of me. And even if they don't, that's okay. I'm not doing it for something in return. And that's how you stay blessed. And I'm going to leave it at that. Stay blessed. Keep doing. Keep giving. Keep loving. But make sure you're doing it for the right people. Or just around to take, 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 and drain you where you don't have nothing left to give. There's limits. Put a limit, limit to the giving. Okay? And make sure they really are in need. Okay? Hi, Schizo. I love you. I'm going to call you now. I want to talk about your eye surgery. I've been a bad friend. Schizo came to see me in the hospital, and he brought me my baby Yoda that I still sleep with every night that I cherish. Yes, I'm about to call you. My battery's low. I'm about to call you from my iPhone. I love you guys. Everyone have a wonderful day. I might come back on later. Bye. I got to work.